Well, hello, friends. Welcome back to Quarantine Talk. Uh, we're doing one by the computer today, and we have a question from Doring Kun, who says, First of all, thank you so much for the inspirational videos. Because of you, I have finally started working on a personal project that I wanted to build for years, but always thought was too ambitious. It's a browser from scratch. I have a couple of questions. Why have you decided to open source Serenity? Do you not feel like it's not yours anymore? Also, if you think that open sourcing your hobby project is a good idea, then when exactly would you say would be the best time? At what point in development? Thank you, smiley face. Well, thank you, Doninku, for these uh, really good questions. Um, I think it's so exciting to hear that you're building a browser because one of the big things that I want to do with this YouTube channel is to just somehow show people that you can build browsers, you can build operating systems, you can build these big, you know, scary programs, and it's not such a big deal. Um, and I think we as a group like programmers have collectively mythologized um, browsers, especially browsers actually, into this sort of beast that cannot be uh, defeated or <laughs> something um, and it's really not so bad like it's it's just a bunch of specs and a bunch of work that needs to be done um, and you can do it like if you if you put in the time and the effort you can build browsers operating systems things like that um, now it's a lot of work but you can do it and if you're uh, driven or interested in it, then then there's no reason that you couldn't. So I'm very, very excited to hear that uh, that you pick up on what I've been trying to uh, put out there and uh, you're actually engaging with the task. That's awesome because more people should build browsers. Uh, more people should build operating systems if, if even if for no other reason than to uh, than to prove to themselves that it's possible because I think um, it's a bit like the um, the four minute mile thing, right? Like um, like the psychological barrier that we've put up, and it's, it's something that we need to break through if we want to uh, see any kind of progress in this field. I think um, if we can just somehow get people to realize that you can make you can build these things. Anyway, that's very cool. So best of luck with the browser project, uh, and then you ask. Uh, why I have decided to open source Serenity. So for me, that was a totally natural decision. Um, I've always been into open source ever since I learned about it. Um, and it always seems natural to me to just give my source code to people. Um, and I don't, it's not natural to me to hide source code. Um, and I think there's no benefit to hiding it um, the only reason to hide source code is to, uh, well, if you're, if you're working for someone and they insist that we're going to hide the source code, then, then you don't have a choice. Um, but uh, if you're doing something yourself and, and you want to hide it, it's because you uh, expect to make a release of it uh, that will, you will sell. And you expect to make some money and um, publishing the source code early would cut into, the, uh, your, in, cut into your ability to sell it. Um, but even in those cases, I think you you should release the source code after a while, just because it's 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 such a nice thing to uh, add to our collective understanding of computers and systems and stuff. Uh, and for me personally, uh, I am a very big fan of open source, but I'm a slightly bigger fan of personal freedom, and I want other people to have their personal freedom, which is why I use permissive licensing. And I know that some people feel differently about this, but this is just what I choose um, based on my own personal principles. Um, but yeah, it's it's just a natural decision. Um, I, I see no value in hiding source code. Um, and about if I, if I don't feel like it's mine anymore, um, that's that's a really interesting question because I do find myself saying less and less often my operating system, um, which was something I was always saying early on when it was only me. But then more and more people started working on it, and um, at some point it sort of started shifting towards feeling a little bit 
awkward saying my operating system and it's gotten more and more awkward but I, I still do think of it as um, I, I still do think of it in a way as my operating system but at the same time uh, there are so many people who have been helping out with it uh, by now and um, I'm very, very thankful for all of the contributions and all of the work that people have been putting in. And I think I'm shifting towards thinking of it as our system, but at the same time, I don't, I don't really know. It's, it's a, it's a good question, but it doesn't scare me. It's, it's, um, it's a lovely thing, right? Because even when I first published the repository, I put a note in there that said, um, that this is a system uh, by me, for me, based on the things that I like. And uh, it also said that I hope that someday we can change this to say this is a system by us, for us, based on the things that we like. And there was actually a point a while back when I went and changed that text to, to actually say based on, or, or for us, by us, based on the things we like. Um, so it's it's been like a gradual transition um, from, from feeling like it's mine towards feeling like it's ours. And, um, I don't know where I am in that transition. I'm like not all the way to, to ours yet, but, but I am moving in that direction and it's a lovely thing. Um, but I, I do personally tend to think that projects like this need, um, sort of a figurehead or, um, like a single, um, person who uh, keeps the vision of it um, clear and um, consistent and um, that's obviously me in this project and I think that um, that ha having having me just steering it in, in a direction that um, that is consistent somehow with some vision that we that I have for it it, it does make sense um, and I think that's that's worked out pretty well for other projects. Um, but obviously there are counter examples and it's something that, that you know, we have to see over time how it works. Um, but I, I like where it's going. Um, and I'm, I'm really, really happy with um, the quality of people who are, are helping out on the project because um, there are some, there's like, people from all different experience levels working on this project and um, it is it is a relatively high threshold project so I shouldn't say all experience levels because there aren't like very uh, basic beginners it's not really um, suitable for that but uh, everything from like um, one year experience and up I say can find a way to work on this and um, I feel like I've been really blessed with the company of, of um, really curious people on this project. And um, in such company, it's, it's not an issue to lose uh, the feeling that it's mine. Like I'm very happy to share ownership here um, collectively of, of this thing um, as ours, I guess, because People are curious and people are uh, earnest and honest and it's a really, really good environment. So yeah, that's that. And, uh, and then you ask, if I think that open sourcing your hobby project is a good idea, then when exactly would you say would be the best time? Um, and I don't, I don't quite know what the answer is to that. I guess I would say whenever you're comfortable. So. I certainly worked on Serenity offline for a while before I put it on GitHub. I don't remember exactly when I put it on GitHub. Um, after a couple of months, I think. Um, and in fact, um, I think I actually put it on GitHub when I, I was going through a particularly bad time and I was getting really worried that uh, if something would happen to me, then uh, I would at least want someone to be able to find this thing I had been working on 
so that they could at least know that it existed. So, um, I, th I think, I feel like that's, that's how it happened originally. Like I was very, very uh, depressed and, um, struggling with some of the consequences of, um, of like, uh, get, getting off of drugs and, um, getting out of rehab and finding myself, you know, with, with nothing to do and nowhere to, uh, go and just being very, very confused. And this, this was all that I had. And, and I just, um, uh, I didn't want it to be lost in time, I guess. So I put it on GitHub, but, um, for hobby projects, I think that when you feel comfortable showing it to other people, just show it to other people. And um, if you don't feel comfortable, don't do it. But for me personally, I think just just put it out when, when it feels like, like you're proud of it, I guess. Um, and I find that the more, the more I do stuff in the open, the better it feels to do stuff in the open. Um, uh, and I think it's, it's this habit that sort of rewards itself because it's a nice thing to do open source. It's a nice thing to, to share the software engineering experience with others. And I'm really happy that I can do it here on YouTube and on GitHub and IRC and everything. And, um, it's, it's an experience that like it's it's even hard it's hard to imagine someone today choosing to not go in the open source um, community if you want to call it that but rather like choosing to be a closed source developer it's it's really bizarre to me that you would close yourself off like that from from this huge world of um, like inspiration information and just awesome people working on interesting stuff right. Um, but to each their own. Pa, pa, pa. Um, I guess, I guess those are my answers to those questions. So <laughs> thank you, Doreen Kuhn, for, uh, for sending them. And, uh, once again, I wish you, um, all the best of luck and fun with your browser project. And I hope that, uh, I hope that one day everybody writes their own browser. I will be very, um, very serious engine diversity on the web. <laughs> uh, okay, maybe not everybody should write a browser, but but I hope more people do because it's fun and it's interesting and it's a bit silly how things are going with uh, everybody just making these themes for Chrome effectively. <laughs> um, and people don't want to do engines anymore. Um, so maybe we can we can break that trend and, and pull everybody in a different direction somehow. I don't know. Anyways, that's it for today. So thanks for hanging out with me at the computer and I will see you next time. Bye.